actually record. And so we got to just do a, so welcome everybody. I'm Cindy Myers and my website is yourenergyhealer.com. And today we're just going to have fun. Well, I don't know if, if all the animals will think it's fun or you or yourself, but it's demo day. And so I thought that, you know, summer, end of summer, it's hot <laughs> and, and people are kind of frazzled right now and their pets seem to be hot and tired too and I think everybody could just use a whole bunch of clearings and there's a lot of yeah a lot of sad energy out there and trauma energy right now with everything going on so I just thought let's just do as many clearings and have a demo day of clearing your animals clearing for yourselves whatever or both <laughs> it's quite often if they're related <laughs> And so see what comes up and we'll go with the flow. Uh, <clears throat> um, before I do that, just for um, a schedule of what's happening, there won't be a healing circle this Saturday, taking the day off, but there will be one next Wednesday. So um, we'll have a, just the healing circle next Wednesday. So that's just the immediate future. I haven't laid out my calendar for September yet, um, but I'm, you know, anybody that has any, uh, requests of topics, things you don't want me to talk about, do more demos, whatever you'd like, let me know, and I can fold that into my calendar. So give you guys some say in things and ideas. Help me with ideas. All righty. So we have Janet here, and I have Milo, a uh, picture of Milo. So I'm going to share the picture of Milo. There we go. And I have a puppy here looking at thinking about getting into mischief. Don't bug him. Hey, hey, Spud, don't bug him. <laughs> she better get scolded by Yogi and Sing. All right. So, Janet, tell me about Milo. How can I help? Um, Milo has a lot of fear issues. Um, noises loud noises scare him startle him um, he's not comfortable when other people come into the house until he gets to know them he'll run and hide underneath the bed um, you've seen milo before he mm -hmm. has um he has a seizure disorder he has seizures and we have to give him medication three okay. times a day for the seizures we put off doing it as long as we could but then the seizures were just coming far too frequently and we had to try to do something about them um, personality wise, I would say the medication really has not changed him. He's always been very frightened by loud noises or like even just closing a door or a door slamming and he jumps and he's very startled. Okay. Okay. So, um, let's try doing some clearings for him. And I would highly recommend looking up the modality called T-Touch. And it's two T's, T-T-O-U-C-H. And when I uh, stop the share, I can put it in the chat box or if somebody else wants to type it in there, they may. Uh, <clears throat> but you might look at some YouTubes for T-Touch for cats in Milo's case, because that can help. Uh, it may not stop the startle reaction, but it can help pull him out faster. And it could help him also just pull out if he has seizures uh, even with the medication, it can just keep maybe help him come out of it. And for him, I would really recommend working the ears uh, because if he's in the midst of having a seizure, um, the ears can help, help anybody uh, if they go into shock. And sometimes they're, it's kind of shocky when they go into a seizure. So I would work the ears uh, inside, outside, in the little notch behind it, just keep working those ears with those T touches. It can really help. But also the and just as you're petting Milo, when you just have a quiet moment, a switch to T touches, because what that does is going to pour in the calming chemicals. It's it triggers the parasympathetic response system, which is the calming system, versus the when he gets startled, that's the fight or flight response system, and he runs and he hides, right? So He's definitely got that run mode. And <clears throat> um, so what by doing the T touches, again, it may not stop 
him from getting startled, but it is when he does show himself to you, if you can start doing the T touches, it just, again, pulls them out of that calming uh, or pulls them into that calmer state more quickly. So they get out of it faster. Um, also, you can, it may create a point and I'm getting the chills. So this is usually when I'm, I'm telling you something I'm supposed to tell you is by doing the T touches, uh, it may get to the point where instead of running and hiding, he runs to you because they learn that you know how to do something that makes them feel better. And they animals are very good at going to what feels better versus what doesn't make them feel good. <laughs> Humans, you know, we like to hang on to our baggage a little bit more. So uh, it's a little harder for humans, although that it eventually helps we get there too. But animals can get to that place much faster. Uh, I had a dog that was my last dog was very frightened of storms and loud noises like that. And, you know, thunder and fireworks and stuff like that. And she would just shake all over and want to run and kind of look for a place to hide. And uh, once I started doing all the tea touches on her and also clearing stuff. And also, I'm going to tell you uh, a method uh, that I use with my guys when they get afraid. And you don't have to be an expert communicator or healer. Just trust that it works is when she gets startled, say in your mind, in your first kind of take a couple deep breaths and then think to her and say these words, clear, fear, clear, panic, because that's what she's experiencing. So you want to clear those emotions. So you're thinking it too, and you're kind of picturing those emotions, just relieving her body. Clear those out. Do that a few times. Clear panic, clear fear. And then take another, you know, keep breathing. And then you're going to say replace with peace and calm. Again, you're sending that out. And, and you're like a little radar. So you're pulling, you're picturing pulling out the fear and the panic, which she's experiencing, and you're replacing it with peace and calm. It works. And so between the two things, they'll come start coming to you going, mom knows how to fix this. <laughs> so uh, so tr it may take a number of times, but just keep getting in the habit of doing that. Um, and it'll help pull her out of that fear state faster. So. And I'm going to clear for her right now. Let's see what we can clear for her uh, or, or him. Milo is a male. Yeah, sorry. We'll clear for him. And um, I'm kind of listening. Uh, so I'm going to clear for him and also let him know what's going on, that what you'll do for him so he kind of understands that he can come to you for help. Okay, so I'm going to communicate to him that. So let's start with clearing. So I'm going to clear unsupported. I don't know if the heat all of a sudden is <laughs> because it's hot here or him. Anxiety, clearing that. Fear, clearing that. Helplessness, clearing that. Vulnerability, clearing that. So when they have the a disorder like the seizure, something where they, it's out of their control, they can feel very vulnerable and insecure. That that just you know, when an animal is in a quote unquote vulnerable state like that, they will want to run and hide because they're the prime ones to get attacked by a predator, right? So it makes sense that he would want to run and hide even when he isn't having a seizure. And I don't know if he senses them coming on. Do you know that? They usually occur when he's sleeping. It doesn't okay. happen when he's awake. It um, has okay. to do with brain pattern when he's sleeping. So um, sometimes he lets out a really funny yell 
because the, he wakes him up and he knows that something's going on. Okay. Okay. So, uh, well, okay. Interesting that when you were just talking about his brain pattern, I had a discomfort in my left, just behind my left eye. So maybe that's where the disconnect is happening. I'll see if my, let's just see if I can. Sometimes my guides can reconnect things that are, I don't know. I can't say, I, I don't have a ton of experience with seizures per se. So I don't know if, if I've had any success or not on that one. I've had it for, um, I've had minimal or short-term success on helping folks with some stuff like uh, Alzheimer's or dementia have a moment of clarity by remapping some of the signals, brain signals, but it doesn't, it's not long-term. So I don't know if that's gonna be true with this situation too. I'm gonna clear his chakras real fast. I'm gonna clear, Let me clear the third eye area because that's where I'm kind of feeling it. And has he had this disorder for a long time? Um, for about three years, since when he turned one is right. when it started. So he's about four years old now. So yeah, for about the last three years. So most of his life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm year old yeah. and, mm -hmm. and give, giving him the medication three times a day is traumatic it's oral it's not a shot it's oral but i have to find him i have to catch him i have to hold him while i give him the medication and that's extremely stressful for him yeah and for you probably too <laughs> yeah okay so the, again the tea touches can help with some of that so when you catch him, do some of the tea touches first. Uh, if he'll let you do it around here and around his face. Again, do it the first time. Do it when you're not having you know, to do the medication. Wait a okay. while. Because you're trying to create a Pavlovian response system where this feels good. Mm -hmm. So if you do that, do the tea touch and then do something negative, you, you can actually create a, a negative association to it. So you want to just have it be pleasurable for a while and then start doing that. And then you can do the tea touch, you know, try and be fast about doing the medications and do more tea touches to counter it. Okay. So, so that's what I would do eventually with him. And I got a nice shift. Good. And I'll have to see if he has anything to say. Is he playful? He likes playing with shoelaces. Okay. And he chases a little fuzzball around the house. Those are the two things that he plays with. Because he was showing me batting something. Mm -hmm. And he wants to do that play. I don't know if it's just in the moment that he wants to play or he's talking about wanting more of that. And does he just do that on his own? Yes. He is not wanting in, to engage, having you help him play with it. And is there any other animals in your family? No. He's it. He's an only, only, child. only one. Only child. <laughs> okay. Um, does he have a blanket or something that he likes? Um, like when I lay down to take a nap and I pull a cover over me, he likes to crawl underneath that cover okay. and snuggle. He likes okay. that. Okay. So that's what he's showing me. That's a connection. Okay. So that makes him happy. He likes mm -hmm. that. So that's comforting to him as well. So that would be a perfect time to do the tea touches as you're cuddling and kind of getting ready to snooze because you're already in that nice, relaxed, peaceful state. Okay. So that really gets that calming energy really flowing nicely. 
and then it's calming to you too because you should be breathing and it's just very relaxing so it might help <laughs> give you a nice nap as well it wouldn't surprise me at all if you both fell asleep doing tea touches <laughs> okay thank you any other questions no thank you you're welcome all righty laura lemon Oh, thank you for putting that on there, Laura. A tea touch comment. Great. Yeah. It's cat night. <laughs> Great. Um, in your note, you said he pooped in the tub a couple times. You're muted. Yeah, um, he's he's done that since I rehomed Swiss Missy. Okay. And he's done that in the past, um, like when I've been gone, like last year when I was gone for a couple of weeks on vacation. Um, and then I came back and a couple of weeks later, he started pooping in the bathtub. So, okay. Um, yeah. um Okay. And was he one of the ones that played a little bit more with Swiss Missy? Uh, he hissed at her and growled at her all the time, but he was the bravest of the three cats. Okay. Uh, he, he didn't let her stop him, but he was very vocal and was always trying to communicate with her to get out of his his face okay <laughs> they didn't they didn't make friends but <laughs> they were no no but he was very brave he's definitely the bravest of the three okay because i know he's the one that usually likes to play um well ansel really likes to, to play i think ansel oh yeah okay. my black and white guy um all right, so let's check in on Lamont. Well, hmm. I'm not sure if this is so much about Swiss Missy as you were on your trip. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is actually kind of a relief. Oh, okay. About the uh, not having to kind of be defensive and on alert with Miss Missy and it's kind of tattling on her how naughty she could be. <laughs> oh, she's going to be in trouble. Um, yeah, I think it was more based on uh, Miss You and then added with an added stress of uh, Swiss Missy's behavior. A little bit being of more stressed out too, so uh, let's just clear. Uh -uh. Hang on, my dog's barking. Okay, we're gonna clear overwhelm, disappointment. Oh. Peed. Peed with you. <laughs> well, I've been peed with him many times too as he's trying to steal every meal from my plate from my oh. dining table. And is this new or is that? Yeah, he's been this way since I got him. Okay. So that's just the normal. Yeah. Oh, Okay. So yeah, I, I really yeah, I think this was not so much what's missing. I okay. think there's actually more relief coming off of that. There might a little confusion because he's here and now she isn't. Confusion mm -hmm. also curiosity of um is she coming back? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna let him know that no, he's got a new home. 
And there's a relief there. So, uh, <laughs> so that's better. Mm. Okay. So also he felt a little more stress, especially when you were out of town, that he had to be more in charge. Oh. Okay. Um he did he's like happy to be back to normal. So he he tried to like take felt like somebody had to be in charge. Yeah, because things were like a little boisterous and nobody to I mean you had a sitter so she was minding Swiss Missy but I don't think Lamont trusted her that she could do the job as well <laughs> as well as he could uh, <laughs> well I don't know uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> I think he didn't mind her or mind him she did not mind him as far as getting into uh, destructive behavior, but she minded him okay for not messing with the cats. Uh, so I kind of felt like he had to protect the other two. And ah, gotcha. So there was just a lot more on his plate, he felt like. <laughs> okay. All right. That so, makes So then he, yeah, it is processing. And it's a lot of crap <laughs> so that's why yeah. He, but yeah so when you go out of town I think that just he takes on that role okay even, w even without Christmas Eve there um, he takes on that role a little bit and so then when he comes when you come back he's got to process it out even though I've been doing clearings on him when you go out of town it's mm -hmm. still it can still need to get processed more and this is good information for me so that when you know if you want me to pet sit again for them uh, i'll file that away and know that he needs a little more attention that he's taking on a different role that i didn't pick up before well and it sort of makes sense too because you know when you feel like you're in an emergency and you have to do something you just have to do it you can't let your body show any weakness and then when right. when i'm back or when your own personal emergency is done then you you can feel all the the stress right. that you've been holding. You like this. yes exactly it's quite common that it can take up to you know a couple of weeks sometimes uh if not longer before they start displaying some of those emotions depending on how you know that adrenaline or fear state can take a while uh, to dissipate, you know, they can, you know, even though you're home, if you go out to the grocery store, they go, Oh no, here, she's gone again for a long time. So they're kind of in that kind of hyper vigilant state until they get comfortable with going, okay, she's home. And then they let their guards down, just like you described. And that's when the, the pooping or sometimes they throw up or you know they get a quite often it's the digestive issue of some sort they pee outside their litter box mm -hmm. something of that nature they have accidents that they don't normally have those are signs that that's just the stress coming out uh, but if it persists you definitely we need to clear it because their system is out of whack but um mm -hmm. yeah i mean even myself if i'm in a highly stressed state for a while it's it's when it's all over and it can take 24, 48 hours, three days. And then all of a sudden I feel like crap. <laughs> it's because that adrenaline is processing out and it just doesn't feel good. Mm -hmm. So your animals can't express that. So they go poop in the tub. Mm -hmm. To let you know. And it's not they're trying to be naughty or anything. They need a they just need to release that energy and that anxiety out. And sometimes it's their way of saying, can you please help me get rid of this anxiety and stress that I've had? Mm -hmm. I don't know how to do it. And we don't notice that they're in that state. So it gets to the point where 
well, then I'm going to poop in the tub. <laughs> That'll get your attention. So, yeah. But it's rare that they're they're doing it to be vindictive. I don't, I don't think animals are vindictive. So <laughs> mm-hmm. maybe a little bit. <laughs> of course, my I had a dog that chewed up all my dress shoes when I would come home from business trips. So <laughs> never chewed up my are are going to the on our walk shoes, just the dress shoes. Wow. <laughs> so he knew. Wow. <laughs> I I had to plant. <laughs> I kept finally learned to keep an old pair that he had chewed up, and I'd plant them so that he could get out that energy right, and right. not destroy a whole new pair of shoes. <laughs> and he was also very good at taking out my dress shoes and socks and putting in his toys <laughs> when I was packing. Oh, oh wow! <laughs> How cute is that? I know. I don't I get to my destination and find a squeaky toy. <laughs> oh, that's cute. <laughs> It's cute. So anyway, all righty. Well, thank you, Laura. Any other questions? Um, no, no. I appreciate that, Cindy. It's it's insightful. It's insightful and it's helpful now. I'm sure it will be helpful in the, in future. the future. Yeah, yeah. That'll give us better insight on his his energy and his thinking. Yeah, especially when you go out of, on your trips. Mm-hmm. All righty. So let's see, Jan. Jan, or uh, I have Blossom here. Right. Do I need to put my put my face on there, or just as long as you? No, can... you don't have to if you don't want to. I have. I just need to hear your voice. Okay. Me. And here's Blossom. Yeah. So uh, you had a, a few things you wanted me to talk to her about, but um, why don't you? What is one of them that you would like me to focus in on? Well, I, I don't know if I told you. I got her about a year ago. She came into rescue. I can't believe it's been a year. Um, after a few months of having her, um, she started, and I had tried to introduce her to other people. She came from an abusive situation. We don't know exactly what happened, um, but she and three other saints. And um, I took in her um, right after my Bella died. I wasn't planning on it, but that's how it happened. And um, she, um, she's just been very, I guess I would say unpredictable. And I can under, I can understand to some degree, you know, cause I don't know what happened to her or what they did to her. Um, but she's, as I said, I've decided that it's, it's unpredictable. Um, she started after a few months of being with me, starting to trust me. And I would take her places and try to introduce her slowly to things. And she went through two classes, two dog classes, um, sets of classes. And she did very well with the other dogs. She's afraid of people. When we take a walk, um, and if you see somebody coming with a person and a dog, and I'll say to them, um, she may bark at you, but you'll probably be fine with your animal. So just, just don't look at her, you know, because that seems to be the thing. People, oh, can I see your dog? Don't, you know, don't just don't, because I don't know what it is. Um, and it is, I have to say, it's very hard to deal with. I thought maybe after this period of time, we would start to, let's say, um, improve things. But the, the big thing is, she's just very unpredictable. After about nine months, and I would take her for walks and do that kind of thing. After about nine months, one day I went out and we, I put a gentle leader on her and we started walking and she just turned around and she's jumping at me and like mouthing, biting at me. And I it's like, stop it. I don't, why are you doing this? We're going for a walk, which we've done, you know, for all this time. And um, I, I guess I just don't even, I feel like I don't even know her. Yeah. You know, uh, it's not uncommon actually. You know, when they first come into the home, again, they're in an overwhelmed state, a confused state. They don't know what's going on. They don't know uh, if this is temporary or permanent or, and they, it's just total over sensory overload because it's all new, you know, sights, smells, people, uh, routines, everything is totally different. And so they're just kind of, withdrawn in some ways because they're just trying to learn and and figure things out so there's a lot of processing 
once they start kind of getting into the routine and beginning to trust you, which she, it has been doing, um, then some of the other stuff starts coming out. And it can be good, can be some of the good stuff. Their personality can start coming out more. But also, I think what's coming out for her is maybe a sense of protection. And that's what came to me with her turning towards you and being mouthy. That she sensed something that didn't feel safe. And she, whether it was for her or for you, but she did not want to go because it didn't feel safe. So she might have picked up a smell. It could have been, you know, like you said, somebody that reminded her of her past life. Something that scared her, that reminded her of something. She was in a kind of, it felt like to me when you described that, kind of a PTSD state. Yeah. And, and, and they don't know quite what they're doing. They're just saying, no, I don't want to do this. This and is I, scary. We, we had been going for a walk. I mean, maybe uh, almost every day, you know, I love to say almost, um, at least somewhat. And that's why I thought, you know, we're going the same way. We're going the same direction. And before we even got to the end of the block, she's like, you know, like, go, I called it going berserk, you know? I yeah. Just, you know, well, again, gosh. it could have been a car that went by that sounded the same as wherever she, you know, where she had been before that you feel was abusive. Something yeah. triggered her that we may not know what the trigger is. It, it maybe we can figure it out at some time if it, ha you know, if it happens regularly at a certain point or, you know, that's when we kind of have to look around what just happened. Yeah, you know? it seemed like it was happening almost every, because the first time I thought, well, what are you doing? You know, what are, you're just having an off day, but it almost seemed like every day in a row for about a week. Let me let me ask you: Was it the same time of day that you went for your walk? It usually is. Um, usually, it's in the. I, I go before they eat, um, or you know, way after they eat because I want their stomach to rest. But usually, it was the same time of day, and we wouldn't even get to the corner, be, you know, of our block before she was doing this. And finally, I thought, I'm sorry, I'm I can't, I can't, I can't take the abuse, you know, of, of getting bit all the time. My husband now is taking her, she's still getting walks. Um, but, um, and I'll take her in the car for rides. She likes to ride in the car. Um, okay. She's going yeah. to the vet again soon um, for her yearly checkup. And we do have medication, which we had to give her anytime she's gone to the vet. Even though I've taken her in, we go, we call what happy visits. We go to the vet's office and go in and we, you know, walk through the, through the waiting room and go and stand on the scale, which she does very well. <laughs> um, and then we get off and sometimes the tech will come out and talk to her and try to, to give her a treat. They, she tends to not want to take a treat from anybody. And, and they know at our vet's office, they will, you know, they'll offer it to her, but if she doesn't, she acts funny or barks at them, then they'll just toss it to her. It's like, okay, it's okay. You can have this, you know, you're fine. Um, so I feel like I've tried, but we do have medication that she has to take so that they can actually examine her and draw her blood and she'll have to have shots. Ugh, not her rabies shot. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that, again, I would do those tea touches, uh, get that calming chemical in her as much as you can. And yes, you probably do have to do the medication because she's such a big girl. Um, yeah. Yeah. Claire, I was trying to, I've been asking, I'm sorry, I was asking the vet also about some, some herbal, you know, calming stuff. And she recommended one and I had, rec I had, you know, looked up another one. Okay. I don't know if that's something she could be on, like normally for a, you know, I don't want her to be tranquilized because this other stuff that she gets is really zonking, but this is. Yeah. More and sometimes the, the, the zonking ones can get them more rattled. Uh, yeah. It just makes them, the world is weird. And if they're already defensive and the world is spinning, that it's just get a little more wiggy. Um, so it's not always what you want is for your outcome. But yeah, so um, I, I've used um, uh, this one called Quiet Moments. Hmm. I don't know if that's the same one your vet has suggested. You could have them look at it. It, it's an herbal it's got chamomile I think in it and some other stuff and it's a chew I've gotten it 
um, I've seen it at some of the pet stores and I've also mm -hmm. seen it at, uh, I've gotten mine at uh, off of Chewy. Oh, okay. And I, I use that one um, for the, my golden that would get scared in the storm. So she would get some of those chews or before 4th of July, I gave all of them, all three of my dogs, some of those chews and they slept through it. Mm, okay. And it doesn't, it, but it doesn't, it, uh, yeah, they can relax and mostly sleep. I would say they get a little sleepy, but it's not like a drugged out sleep either. Yeah. It's just calming. She does like to go in the bathroom and lay on the, on the floor when she, she's never liked a bath, which I've yeah. luckily have, I've been able to do, but now I've started getting her because I know that I guess the tub, the, the tub itself can be protective, like for storms and stuff. And I figure maybe that will help her to, and she'll go in there and she'll sit. And one, yes. I think, I think it was the 4th of July. I did get her to sit in, lay in there. And I just sat by her petting her and petting her and petting her. She seemed calm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Yeah. They like the um, small, small areas. They like the den like spaces. So bathrooms, closets are yeah. quite often very comforting to them. And when they get afraid like that in storms or uh, firework type things. And she actually likes a crate. I was told she didn't, well, she had only been, she had been one other house for four days and the lady had to get rid of her because she had to go back to work and she couldn't crate her. But I will, you know, I will both use if she's being really naughty. I'll say, okay, Blossom, get in your crate. And she'll look at, it's like, you need to go and settle down. And she'll go over there and go in her crate and lay down, you know, or she just goes in her right. crate and lay down by herself. So she, yeah, you know, that yeah. Happens. Yeah, again, Den like <clears throat> they like that. And so good that she's finding places. Yeah. That's a sign that to me that she's more comfortable and that she can find places that she feels comfortable in and needs, you know, she's got a place that she can go when she's needs that comforting space. Yeah. Um, and as far as the other, I really just think she had some trauma. You know, she, like you said, she had past trauma. And for whatever reason, and, and again, it can be different in uh, you know, it's not just that your husband may be bigger and stronger and can handle her. It's different. They don't generalize. Animals don't always generalize. And so I think too, some of her reaction was, yes, she was afraid something triggered her, but she was also, I, it, I keep hearing protective. So she was afraid, wanting to not to go f beyond and something felt dangerous to her. And she was tr clearly trying to tell you, go back. This is not good. So well, she, something about going for a walk with you that just all of a sudden something yeah, after that but, length of time, it just seems so strange. But she yeah, does. but again, that it was a trigger. Something triggered, yeah. and it could have been a car. It could have been somebody walked by. It could have been somebody that walked long before you did down the street that wore a perfume. Mm. And their, you know, their nose is so much stronger. And she picked something up that reminded her of her past life, and she was in a panic. Yeah, and she still does um, react to things that he does. Like she reacts when he opens a can of soda, you know, that pop noise. She runs to him and barks her head off. She just, she's not as bad as what she used to do um, when he comes in and goes with either his bow and arrow or when he goes for gun practice. Um, she goes berserk and barks tremendously mm -hmm. at him. Uh, but yet at other times she will go in there and like act like, well, okay, let's play or sh it, it's okay. So it's just, you know, it is just so strange. But, Not really. <laughs> I don't okay. feel those things are strange at all. Their associations, to, it may feel strange to you just because you don't know her past. Okay. But wherever she lived before, some of those things, either they're a new experience and she, and that just scares her because she doesn't understand them. But I would mm -hmm. say the soda can is because whoever she lived with probably drank beer or something that was abusive to her and there's an association. Oh, sure. Yeah. And and that's pretty pretty clear. So let's clear some of the trauma. I'm going to clear some of the trauma from her from her past life. It may or she may or may not describe it to me. They may 
And I think there's not just one. <laughs> there's lots of different traumas. I'm also getting that it was probably a couple that had her before. Um, that's what we were told. They had, there was a couple and they got a divorce and they just left the dogs and moved out of the place where they were. Yeah. Okay. And, and so not only the abandonment, but uh, I think both were not always nice to the dogs. Yeah. She didn't even know how to be a dog. You know how when dogs just sniff everything in the grass and everything, when I would first take her for a walk, all of a sudden she'd stop and I think, well, what are you doing? Because she walked unsurprisingly really good on the leash, actually. She would stop and I think, what do you do? Well, she'd just be stop to pee or poop on the sidewalk. She didn't know that wasn't what she was supposed to do. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, again, it goes back to that initial thing where everything is just overwhelmed when she first came to you. So she's got, she's still learning a lot. And I, if you could, I would still try taking her to classes, you know, different things okay. uh, okay. in a control setting and just try and, you know, lots of positives. But also if she really gets into that freaked out state, don't push it. Yeah, I have- Turn I around, have go home <laughs> because mm -hmm. I don't want to reward it, but at the same time, she's not in her right mind. She can't hear you. Yeah, I don't know if I had told you that she, I would take her to like the pet stores and one of the big pet stores, there's a, a guy there and she was gradually getting, and he he was very good because I told him told him the story. And so he just would, you know, he wouldn't look at her directly and he, we could talk and as long as he was, but gradually he was able to have her take a treat out of his hand, which was such a big step, you know? <laughs> but then again, when she started reacting like so strangely, I thought, well, maybe we better not be doing that for a while, you know, but. Yeah, you know. Um. again. I, it depends on the triggering and and uh, if if she if she associates that one guy with the treat and she learns to be his friend, it's a different situation than somebody walking just down the street. That's sure. a totally different sure. experience for her. And she and they don't they don't we can train them to generalize more, but they see it as totally different incidents you know experiences in different situations so thank you all right so let's i want to do one last thing for her i'm going to clear her root chakra let her know that you you and your husband are safe and this is her forever home it is yes i have okay. it <laughs> okay and letting her know that she does like the name Blossom. Well, I was trying, as I said, I was trying to think of something. I thought, well, Blossom, a new life, a new, you know, coming out. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. she likes that much better. I didn't like the other name. Um, so uh, if you stay on for the healing circle, I'm going to work on her root chakra some more because there's some distortion there. Okay, so thank let's you. Let's work on that. So thank you. She's such a beautiful dog. <laughs> and she's lucky to have you. She Patience. likes to lay on the air conditioning vent. Did you see that in the picture? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're no dummies. <laughs> when I had, when my, uh, was using a system with vents, it's been, how come it's so hot in this house? I have all the air conditioning on. <laughs> all three dogs are on all the different vents. It's like, no wonder. <laughs> she came from Alabama. So I keep thinking, well, she's used to heat, but no, she didn't. No, there's no dummy <laughs> they're smart okay so um uh check the chats because some folks had some ideas for other um calming stuff ideas for you that's all, that's what i love is having a community and uh, let's see jennifer we've got time to get in jennifer i didn't get the name of you had the cute two doggies are you on Jennifer? Yeah, Jennifer's on. So I don't know which dog I would like and um and what their name is. Are you there, Jennifer? Yes. Hi. <laughs> Hello? 
Hi, can you hear me? Hi. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. And I can hear you. So you have two cutie pies here. Which one would you like me to work with? Um, the bigger one, Elsie. Elsie? And what's going yes. on with Elsie? Um, we have a lot of trouble with her riding in the car. Mm. She's, yeah, she's that's a big one. Anxiety, <laughs> just in general. <laughs> okay, so same thing. Learn those tea touches. Go to <laughs> tea touch for dogs. Yeah, and been, work yeah, on those. I've been doing that. Good, good. Yeah. Um. Yeah, cars can be tricky, and um, it, to undo the fear, sometimes you have to be really patient and go super slow if you have the luxury to do that. And meaning, you know, you just build up. I don't. Is she food motivated? Yeah, but if I give her that, she'll just throw it up. No, I know. I'm not not in the car. I'm talking to, even before you get okay. to the car. It's like, I mean, we would go, I would, for training purposes, go really slow where you just give them cookies to be brave to look at the car and to get in the yeah. car without going well, she'll anywhere. She'll get in there. And she, yeah, she likes going for rides. It's just the the actual, you know, so does she get nauseous? In the... Yeah, and she. Well, how, where does she sit? Like, um, in the front. Generally. Okay. Oh. We had her to where she was good with it, and then it had been a while since she had been in the car, and then we, you know, have to start all over again with her. Okay. Okay. Um. So let's. Let's see what I can do. Some of it is the anxiety, so I'll clear that. There we go. And does she look out the window or does she lay down? She does both. It just, it starts with yeah, you know, she'll she'll be fine and then she'll start drooling and then <laughs> Right, and is she looking out the window when she starts drooling and then lay down? Um, I don't know. It she's just up and down. She's up and down. Yeah. Okay. It's like trying like I, just I, wanting to get her to. So what I told, uh, discussed, uh, I think it was with our first demo, of uh, the release panic, release fear. I want you to. Uh, it's not really panic. I would say release anxiety, release fear for her or anxiety. Just focus on the anxiety. Just release anxiety. That's nice and easy. Release anxiety. Keep thinking that to her when you first start writing mm -hmm. and replace okay. peace and calm. Yeah. And think peace and calm and think to her. And it's good to think it. You can say it out loud, but also do it mind to mind. Tell her what's going to happen. We're just going for a ride. We're going to yeah. do this. And then we're going to come back home. You know, we're going to make these. Yeah. And then we're going to go back home. I do that. I've done that with some of my animals that my dogs and even my alpacas that I've taken places. I think to them what's happening. They calm down. Okay. So they're just overwhelmed oh you could release overwhelm too because she's overwhelmed so i'm gonna talk about that hmm. yeah try that let's see if that doesn't okay. help and then uh okay. if you see improvement great if not let's try again there's a couple other ideas but i want to just try one to see if that happens if that helps because that's been okay. very, um, it's been very beneficial at times. I've I've used okay. it myself a number of times for my animals, and they do calm down. Yeah, and they just okay. they just get overwhelmed because they don't know what's going on, and then they don't know, they get spun up, and things the adrenaline just goes cuckoo, and then and the world is spinning by, and blah. <laughs> 
know. Yeah, well, um, exactly. I need to throw yeah. up. <laughs> big trucks will go by. Uh, big trucks will go by and she'll, you know, like hover, you know, like, oh, God, what is that? You know? Yeah, yeah. So, so that's when you would say, please, you're fine. And I think it to them. Yeah. And just repeat. And then I repeat, this is what we're doing. You're safe. You can yeah. also tell them you're safe. Yeah. You're with me. We're having fun. It's a car ride. No big deal. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, you know, yeah. if we start getting worried, sometimes we go, oh God, now they're going to get sick. And then we get anxious ourselves. They're picking that up. Mm -hmm. And they go, see, there is something to be afraid of. Mom's afraid. <laughs> She's getting anxious. I'm yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So then you get into that. So by just doing that peace and calm stuff, it's calming you and they, you're like a little radar and you're sending out, you're, you're tuning yourself to that nice energy and they pick that up and they calm down. Yeah. So I think that, let's try it. I, I think that might help. Okay. Because she's pretty intuitive. Yeah, she is. She She sees things and... <laughs> Mm hmm She feels very highly intuitive. She listens. Mm hmm yeah. So I think if you try that with her, it may take a couple times, but it's it's amazing. They, they go, oh, <laughs> they're they more likely because when we say it out loud, they may may recognize a word or two, but uh, and then it turns into the peanuts, you know, the the cartoon wah 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 yeah. wah, <laughs> and they're looking for another yeah. word. That wah 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 cookie. <laughs> try to say that softly because yeah. three little ones here that know that word <laughs> and I don't know if you're hearing the squeak, squeak right. back there <laughs> yeah so very good thank you right. good, a cutie pie thank you all right anybody Thanks. else have anything anybody for themselves <laughs> all right so we're going to go right into the healing circle. So I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs>